welcome to another episode of the Creative Spin Podcast. Buckle up, you're in for a show. In your case, we're just going to jump into it. Matthew. I can talk for hours. You can talk for hours. <laughs> Matthew, thank you. Thank you for being here, man. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, uh, we've been trying to hunt you down and try to get you in here, but you're like the busiest guy out there. I mean, lately... You've kind of had to slow down a little bit, right? Absolutely, yeah. But before we get into all the nitty-gritty, I think uh, everybody at home or uh, wherever you are listening to us, I don't know if you're walking your dog, good for you, good for the dog. Um, let's let's tell people who Matthew is, what you've been up to, and, you know, just obviously give me a sales pitch, okay? okay. Like two minutes. Like, Matthew, where were you born? Where were you raised? Where? Okay, now I'm getting into the details. Yeah. Since, I don't know, man. Just, I'll let you start. All right. Born in Toronto, Canada. There you go. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my parents are Portuguese from San Miguel Island in the Azores. There you go. And I was uh, raised in the Portuguese community mm-hmm. um, and still still active to this day. There you go. Uh, a man of many talents. Yes. I mean, we've, we've met uh, throughout these community uh, lives. I always feel like the, the, the Portuguese community is like, a, it's almost like a second life. Yeah. Uh, you know, you live your regular lifestyle and all of that. And then you have that, you know, you always go back to the roots, I think. Um, there's always that little bit of a pull uh, from, from that cultural side. And uh, we've uh, we've been uh, you know we've worked together in the past in a couple yeah. of different. Uh, I've given uh, you many headaches over the yes. years. <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of therapy had yeah. to be oh, uh, done. After. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. You know, it's uh, it is, it is, it is. But you know, what is your passion? What what have you been doing these last years in the community and and, and in your life, basically? Uh, family's num- number one, always. you know, always. Um, but television, I love television. I've mm-hmm. been on TV for 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as a kid, I was in a few commercials, but, uh, as a co-host of a national morning talk show, yeah. uh, Gente Nossa TV yeah. is, uh, so it's all longest. in Portuguese. Though. It's all in Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, well, bilingual, I've done, I've done some stuff in English as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the program is a, is a Portuguese community show. It's been on for 33 years. Uh, Jamie Edia was on it uh, I know. way back in the in, day. <laughs> in another lifetime. I think I was, what, 19, 20? Um, something that's, like that's that. I, yeah, it's the age I started. Yeah. yeah, we did a couple of shows there, and it was fun. It was, uh, you know, I think it was what kind of got me curious about this whole, like, uh, video and audio uh, lifestyle. And, uh, yeah, that, oh, man, yeah. You, you took me back quite a few years. I didn't yeah, have. I've the, seen some of the stuff I did you did not years ago, have, going through all that file footage. You did, yeah. Wow, I got to watch that again, yeah. man. Uh, I didn't have the gray hair, though. I mean, the no. charm was not there yet, no. but it was getting there. It was yeah. getting there. So your confidence shined through through <laughs> television, and there you here you are. Fast forward, you know. Look at this. We always go back to our twenty roots. years later. Look yeah. at what happened. Um, so, how did you start? How did this all begin? Oh, I've known Nelly and Cesar Pedro for. Uh, I mean, since I was a kid, I grew up with their son, and you know, we we going to the exhibition on, in, you know, in the summer times. So for, uh, for people who so don't know, uh, they are the, uh, the, the host and producer uh, of, the host show. And producer of the show. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I've seen them do their stuff. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I've always been fascinated about being on TV and I was always never shy. Uh, I was always the guy on stage, you know, emceeing events or, uh, talking to people and, and, uh, and then I've, uh, they had an opportunity that, you know, their co host had left at the time. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, you know, we need somebody to fill that role. And like, okay, come in and, you know, read something. And, and you were how old at that time? 19. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah, I'm aging myself now, but it's okay. I know. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and I did it in uh, the first take. Wow. I went in, and uh, Nelly comes in. She goes, You ready? And Caesar goes, No, he's done. He did it. I'm like, Oh, okay. And then I started to do... Uh, so it's always been something that you've had, like, w- as as a kid growing up, were you doing, like, you know, the old uh, in the living room with the oh, yeah. camera? Yeah, I, was in, yeah. To be I was in the basement and I yeah. was doing stuff and, you know, all yeah. right. I had the, the fake microphones from Walmart and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Yeah. And, uh, I mean... Now it's been 10 years that you've been doing this, yeah. more or less, right? Yeah, I've been kind of coming out of my shell because I started out with just doing a community segment program uh, that, you know, what, every two minutes uh, once a week. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing interviews and uh, and then I was hosting the show by myself for the first time. Caesar calls me. He's like, hey, so uh, Nellie's on her way to the airport and uh, we got a show to do. Uh, you're coming in and doing it. I'm like, no pressure. I am? What? <laughs> like, I'm by myself? 
<laughs> no pressure. But they're awesome. Like they, they, they just, you know, taking me under their wing and, and showing me the ropes. And I've learned amazing experience. Aside from learning on the job, did yeah. you, did you get any like education? No, because to I, I took hospitality and tourism. I, okay. I wanted to, uh, to go through, uh, well, you know, the route that my dad took, which is a travel mm-hmm. agent and I yeah. love traveling. So I'm like, okay, let me see if I can get into this business. And, uh, and then, you know, television happens and I love doing that. So I can do a bit awesome, of both and awesome. it's great. I mean, what have you seen change in the last 10 years? Like how, uh, uh, uh of yourself and of the, you know, the, the whole TV business and all of that. Like, how, how has that been? Of myself adapting more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just self-learning, a lot more self-learning, a lot more YouTube tutorials <laughs> up till all hours. Just like, hey, how do yeah. you do this? Hey, how do you do that? Uh, you know, Thank God self, for YouTube. self, yeah, I know. Uh, self-taught, you know, editing and shooting and, um, and learning from mistakes, like making a lot of mistakes and, you know, and having people say, you know, that's too blurry. That's too, you know, shaky. That's, you know, yeah. cutting well, down that's, on this. That's or, the only you know, way to really learn. more is, light. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to make the mistakes and you got you to gotta really try your best. And, and that's how you learn, how you evolve, right? Yeah. Uh, what about the, the TV uh, side of things TV, as a whole? Like, TV what industry, do you think is, is it, happening? It's, it's moving online. You yeah. know, we're, we're, we've got news at every second that we want and TV at every second. Nobody wants, I mean, my generation, nobody watches TV anymore. Yeah. You know, Netflix came around and that's it. They want to watch it. They don't want to watch commercials, sorry, sponsors. They're very important <laughs> for television yeah. industry, but uh, they want to fast forward. They want to watch it when they want to watch it. Yeah, it's uh, it's becoming a little bit of a, of a struggle, I think, for um, the, I'm going to call it quote unquote, older media to, to survive because of the, the technology. I mean, technology just came around and, and now we get everything on these little guys, the yeah. phones, right? Yeah. Um, and we can shoot with them. I've done, you know, series oh, amazing. and stuff. We were just talking these. off camera. <laughs> these things are amazing. Yeah. I mean, um, pretty soon I'm going to have like three cam- yeah. three phones here filming us instead of the cameras. But it's, um, I think a lot of people are always come with uh, with the negative thing of, oh my God, TV's going to die or radio's going to die or... The- <laughs> No, I, I don't think it will ever. No, it'll always be around. I think the these uh, older medias are just on that course now to adapt. They're adapting already uh, to the new reality. Yeah. And, and that's how they're going to survive. It, and the ones that don't adapt, don't somehow find a way to kind of work around utilizing the new media. And those are the ones that are going to kind of fall off the wagon yeah. and just disappear. But... If you're able to bring things into uh, platforms that are online and available to everybody on their phones, I think that's the way you're going to be able to, to to continue and to grow and to to still do your job, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, are you are you thinking about jumping into that uh, bandwagon of of doing more things online and or like what's the whole idea? Yeah, man? I mean, I've, I've always all I've been doing my own kind of Facebook live stuff uh, here yeah. and there, especially my traveling. Everybody loves seeing you know where's Matthew? Like where's Waldo? I love to see people you know? travel, especially <laughs> where's now? Matthew? What are you doing? Where what are you eating? Where you know? So my travels are always the hits of my of my Instagram yeah. and and Facebook, but. Um, but yeah, so I'd like to, to, and that's where the Matthew show um, yeah. was born. I was looking for an Instagram name and I was in Portugal with my cousins and mm-hmm. I was like, you know, what should I do? You know, Matthew travels, Matthew eats this, like when kind of coming up with stuff. And my cousin goes, hey, what about the Matthew show? Like yeah. your life's a TV show. Like you're always constantly <laughs> doing something interesting or fun or you're at an event or whatever. I agree. So brand it. And I did. That's been my social media brand for, uh, you know, maybe five, six years now. And and it's been interesting the the learning curve. Yeah, it has. Yeah, right. yeah, it has. Because I'm I mean I'm not really I don't know I guess I guess I am a content creator, and mm-hmm. I look at other content creators and I see them and it's like how do you make money with sponsored ads and doing all that stuff? That's so cool, but yeah. I can't get myself motivated to that point. So Jamie, oh, you, some some advice here. I'm going to t- interview you now. <laughs> okay, elderly advice. You know what? I know this is kind of cheesy what I'm going to say because you you hear it so much. But it is the truth. Do what you love first. Don't worry about the money so much. And I get it. You know, a lot of people might be going, yeah, but I still need to pay my bills at the end of the month. Yeah. The equipment's yeah. expensive. Like, I've it invested is. a lot of money in my own equipment. Yeah. It's like, oh, trust me. Gotta I pay know. that back somehow. I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it, it's very transparent how... Um, when you're in front of a camera or, or just doing a podcast or whatever it is, it's very transparent who you are. You, the truth comes out. There, there, there's, it always bubbles up. You yeah. know what I mean? And if you're just doing something for the sake of the money, 
then that's going to bubble up. You know, you're going to come across as somebody that's just there selling, 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 or that, you know, and, and that's why I say, do what you love. Don't do it just for the money, because when you're doing it f- for, for the love, you know, your true self is going to come out who you really are, who you really, what you really like to do. And that's what's going to be interesting to the people who follow you because they're going to follow you, right? They're not, this whole thing about, you know, um, having a TV show or having a a show and then having all of these advertisings in there. We, we get it. We know that people need to make money and and everything's expensive and, and, you know, life is expensive, but we need to start being smarter in how we're going to be delivering that message to um, the audience, right? So that it doesn't disturb them so much because we are now, like it or not, living in this society where we can fast forward everything. We can, you know, jump ahead on most of the stuff, even though, you know, sometimes they don't allow us to click the skip button. Yeah. And, and it's annoying. Or you got to wait for the ads. Exactly. When you have to wait for those whole 15 seconds. Yeah. I mean, what are we going to do for 15 seconds? Oh, my God. But I think, um, you know, we need to adapt to that. We need to reinvent the way that we're, we're putting out information. And you see it a lot now. I'm sure you've seen it, too. The, the, the YouTubers out there that are being smart about how they're promoting uh, stuff, right? They're being more informative about the brand that they're promoting. You know, it's not just, hey, look at this mug. You want to buy it? It's $5.99. Yeah. No, it's not so much about that. It's like, dude, look at this mug. Look look how, you know, I can grab this like that. They live and breathe it. Yeah, exactly. I I use this every single day. Like, this is so cool. And all of a sudden it becomes a conversation. It becomes part of the conversation. And if you're looking for a mug, and I just had a conversation about how cool that mug is in my hand, then you're going to go, okay, you know what? I want to get that. Yeah, I just did it with a coffee machine for my mom. I think this is airing after Christmas, so I'm not spoiling anything. <laughs> no, no, this Hope will you be like it, mom. airing. Wait. Uh, yeah, the guy was like making all these coffees on it. I'm like, oh my God, they can do like French vanillas. They can make your tea, you can whatever. You can send an alarm and app and, I'm, and like, I'm getting that coffee machine. <laughs> and you were listening to it because you're like, huh, I might need that yeah. or I want that or I, I, you know what, I can give that to somebody else. So I think advertising needs to work more like that. I mean, the whole um, old fashioned ads and all of that, they're good. Yeah, I'm not saying the whole, that they're like, not shopping channel kind of idea, right? Yeah, that, that yeah, I don't think like, that's hey, gonna look work at this, anymore. This is cool, right? It needs to be more informative. It needs to be more, um, you know, even with um, with us, um, you know, we, we do have a sponsor in our show, uh, but even that part, I'm actually thinking about changing it completely because I feel like we we can do a little bit better and and not you know be so much looked at as an as an ad on the on the show. As opposed to like just putting it in as a conversation. I think that works better. And it works better for us that we're doing the show. And yeah. It works better for the client too because they will more get like more response. More like an infomercial? More like, yeah. Right, than an this ad. This is what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that that works better. So in order f- to get things going nowadays, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this thing is, you know, we, we tend to look at the Joe Rogans of the day and, and, yeah. and the big contracts that are out there and, you know, people doing very well. Those are like, that's just such a small yeah. percentage when you look at the whole, you know, YouTube land or, or podcast land. It's, and they started from the bottom, right? I mean, And for years and years. And yeah. a lot of times people don't, they forget about that. They see the yeah. end result. They forget that, oh. Scroll he's been, down to that first <laughs> video they put on YouTube and look at the results. He's been compared. doing it for 10 years. I mean, years? I do it myself. Yeah. That was horrible what I put out there. But you just got to do it. You have to, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. And you were telling me, oh, you know, you start seeing so many people doing it. But yeah, but there's only one Matthew. And that's what I told I you, I know, right? yeah. It's like, it, it, when does it become saturated and, and too much? Um, I don't think it will ever become saturated. I mean, that's, you know, it's the way it is. People will gravitate to people that they, that they like. And I think that's, that's what you have to keep in mind when you're doing something to put on air. It's like, don't think about millions. Think about people who care about what you care. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. And that's been my motto. I, whenever I do something, I do it wholeheartedly and, and give it 150% and Mm -hmm. with passion. 
uh, you know, a lot of people hate that word, but I, I love that word. It's like, it is. If I'm going to do something. You have I'm going to do be, I'm going to put my all into it. That's a downfall personally for me because I take way too much time doing things and editing things. And but you're like, happy at the end. Shit, this right? isn't good. I got to fix this. And, yeah, but you're happy. But yeah, at I'm the happy end. when I see it. I'm like, oh my God, I did that. I made that. Exactly. I filmed that. I shot that. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, like you said, there's only one Matthew, you know, and I have a face for television. So anybody out there that... <laughs> well, especially now that you have the beard going on. I know, I mean, yeah, this is new. You still it's, can't it's compare. New. You still can't compare still to the... Still getting used to it. My grandmother hates it, but... Uh, yeah? You know, yeah? Yeah, the older folk there, they oh, don't like it. Oh, your baby it. face. That's like, I'm, I'm almost 30. Yeah. I hate to say it, but damn it, I'm yeah. almost 30. Listen, so let's gotta, not bring age know. to this conversation because I can, uh, you know, I can hit it's that. It's just a number. It's, you know. Listen, Matthew, let's, let's get away from the age thing, okay? I'm joking. I don't give a <laughs> crap. Um, Older and wiser, right? It absolutely. absolutely. It absolutely is. It's so, like, I'm so much wiser, Matthew. Um, <laughs> why did you start in Portuguese? That was always a question I wanted to ask you. We've never had that conversation, yeah. and we're going to have it now. Because you were already born here. Yeah. So, why did you choose to, to, to do things in Portuguese? Well, I lived and breathed in the Portuguese community. I mean, mm -hmm. I was the only child. My parents were involved in, in the Casa de Açores and in the church uh, organizations and folklore. Mm -hmm. uh, folklore dancing. I've been doing it since I was six years old. So your parents were very, uh, you know, I guess, to blame when it comes yeah. to, to that. Because yeah. they, they, they put you right that center in the community life and, yeah. and the Portuguese life too, right? And I mean, I always had the option of just, you know, not doing it and going to school. But yeah. I would choose to want to do it because I, I liked giving back to the community. But that's I, what I was going to say. I a felt lot like of, I had a purpose. A lot of kids uh, your age might have just said, nah, dad, you know what? I don't want to yeah. involve myself there. I, yeah. I want to just keep keep myself in the, in the more quote-unquote Canadian uh, environment, but yeah. you went all in. Like you, you truly enjoyed the tradition of yeah. uh, that we have in Portugal, right? Yeah, I mean, my cousins are like, man, you're like way too Portuguese. <laughs> cousins here or cousins there? Cousins here, and oh, and some of them there. Well, some of them there, they like it, but the younger yeah. generations that there don't even get as, as involved as I do here. Yeah, because that's what I was gonna say. See, I was I was also born here, but I was raised in Portugal, and then when I came here, the reality of the community is different from what the reality that we have back home. Yeah. Um, because uh, the in, the culture evolved, right? It, it went into different different things. And uh, in, in, in our community, it, it's almost like it, it became this uh, little bubble that kind of kept its way the same yeah, way. Yeah, we did. We have kind of of uh, how do we say this nicely? <laughs> no, uh, you, I think stopped the, time, right? A little bit. Well, that's what I mean. That yeah. that little time bubble that stay there and we're it's not a negative we're comfortable, thing right we're comfortable in the way we do things and the events and they have to be a certain way and and that's kind of a downfall of our community too is they don't let the younger gener some people don't let the younger generation flourish and adapt and evolve and mm. do certain activities or events as they should um and they want it done a certain way or it has to be done like this because it's been done like this for 30 years yeah. It's like, but they don't even do this back home in Portugal anymore. I know, that, that, that was the weird part for me when I came in. Because, I, like, I, I, will, I ended up coming back. I was 19, 20. Um, so it was, it was such a... I wasn't expecting it. Let's, let's put it that way, right? Um, because uh, I noticed that the culture, the traditions here were so much bigger than in Portugal, where yeah. I came from. I'm like, What's going on here? This yeah. is like, w w what's going on? But understandably, if you think about the way that, um, you know, the immigrant mind works, you leave a country behind and family and traditions and all of that. And you come to a new country with new language, new traditions, new everything. You want to hold on to something, right? Yeah. You want to hold on to that that you knew. And I think that was that is what we, you see when you look at the communities around the world. It's not just here in Toronto; it's everywhere. Every, yeah. every community um, out there, and I'm I'm guessing uh, any culture out there. That's what you see, right? People bring in. Yeah, you want to preserve a certain essence, right? Of of, of that of, memory, of, exactly. Of what was yeah. going on while in the country of origin, they have it. Yeah, it's it's all around them, so they don't yeah. need to to kind of nurture it and keep it. No, they they keep evolving. They they acknowledge it that that was there, but yeah. they keep evolving. So it was interesting, and to see you jump into the community and do things in Portuguese, because I mean, you were born here, and your Portuguese yeah. is pretty good. Thank you. So <laughs> self taught you know. again. Never went to Portuguese school. Never went to Portuguese school. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, wow. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anna's gonna. <laughs> 
jump in here and go, why? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's interesting that you did that. And, and you're still thinking about even now, you know, when you're going into newer adventures and all that, you're still thinking about continuing with somewhat of a Portuguese. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's speaking. been that's been you know, my roots, that's been, yeah. you know, where everything started. So why am I just going to, um, you know, give it up and branch out to the, to the Canadian community and forget about, you know, Portuguese background? No, absolutely not. Good for if you. I can continue to do stuff in the community and still do stuff, you know, in Portuguese, why yeah. not, right? No, and it, it's a niche, right? Yeah. And uh, a lot of times, excuse me, I shouldn't have been having coffee. I know, I'm like, I'm getting that, yeah, yeah reflex. Too. This happens, I apologize. Um but I was going to say, you know, it's a niche and in a lot of times uh, when it comes to even business, uh, people try to do, you know, go broad and do everything. Yeah, bring it back, man, and, yeah. and do the niche thing because sometimes that works better. And I think in this case for you, I think that that could work very well. Right? And um, the last time you were in Portugal, which was this summer, you were able to kind of fit in two weeks there, even with the whole quarantine thing and all of that. Two weeks became two months. Oh, two months. Two months. Jeez. Why wasn't I with you, man? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> living on the edge, like literally uh, during yeah, a global yeah. pandemic. Wow. Um, How was that adventure? How was that? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, my mental health took a huge, huge fall, as a lot of people did yeah. during uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic, and we're still going through it. Yeah. I was a person who, you know, every two months itching to get out. Let's go somewhere. Let's do something. Oh, I uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling, you know, <laughs> as if it's whether it's uh, you know walking up the Great Wall of China that took me two and a half hours. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, or just, you know, Portugal for two months or wherever it is around the world. Um, and I was like, okay, I need to go somewhere. And my grandmother, 85 years old, was the one that motivated me. There you she, go. she went on her own. She's like, I'm going. I'm like, what? There's a global pandemic. You're at high risk. Like, what are you doing getting on an airplane? But she goes, no, I'm cooped up in my condo. I've got one life to live. Let me go, you know, spend some time with my sister, with my daughter there and, Amazing. you know, go to mass and, Love it. you know, see my family and that when I can. And if I don't, hey, at least I'm breathing a different air. Yeah. And, and as said, long okay, as you do it like, safely, that's, yeah. I mean, that, that was the important thing. And I'm like, thing. okay, let me, let me go do that. And I did. And I took, but back you know. Th- but, but you went in August, when? there was, were less cases. It was in August? Abs- yeah, it yeah, was yeah. August, September. So there were a lot more, a lot less cases and mm-hmm. things were opening up and. Yeah, they uh, were starting you know. to open up, and I think yeah. that was the big issue. Yeah, uh, was, was the starting to open up, and people feeling. And a lot a of people bit. didn't go because of the quarantining here in Canada. Right? Yeah, they didn't want to do too. the two weeks. Whereas mm-hmm. I was fortunate to work from home, and I had just bought a hot tub, so that, that was my <laughs> quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> that can help. Yeah. So how 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 did it work out there? It was awesome. I mean, it was nerve wracking. It was like for me, who's a hypochondriac and uh, very very nerve wracking. Like, what do I touch? What do we know? Who's here? Oh my god! I don't know. You know, don't touch stuff, uh, man. Just don't. I was sanit- <laughs> I went through like ten bottles of sanitizer. <laughs> like <laughs> anything I touched, and mask was glued to my face, and yeah. stay away from people. And uh, you know, it may have looked on Instagram and that like I was living la vida loca, but no, it was. Yeah. You know, I took stuff seriously. Take off and, the mask, take God, a selfie, put the mask eggs, on. I did. And that's yeah. Ronaldo's mom. So I, I met. Oh, tell I, us, I tell us. Her, and I was in, went to Madeira uh, and spent some time there to uh, do some filming and, and relax. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to a fashion show that was hosted by Ronaldo's sister, oh. uh, Alma. And I got to, to know her and I did she has an interview sh- with her as well. You can watch Does she it. have a line of? Um, she has a clothing line, yes, CR7 yeah. clothing line. So I okay. went and did a story with her. Uh, and uh, you can watch it on Ungen TV uh, website and YouTube. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, so I went and saw her mom, and she's been very ill. She had a stroke, mm. and she had a mask on. We all masked, but I sat beside her at the fashion show, and you know took the mask off and took a selfie, and mm. uh, and everyone on you know where's your mask? What are you doing? She's yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm like we literally took the mask off. We took the picture, put it back on. Like you yeah. know, be respectful. Yeah, you do. You have to be uh, respectful of that, and yeah. and be careful with everything we do nowadays. But um, but then, and, and then from there, stop living. I think. I mean, yeah. You know, it, I I don't want to throw anything out in the air that's not going to come right back at me. But we we need to take this seriously, absolutely. But we also need to know how to move on and and get ourselves back to some sort of normalcy. Yeah, I think we need to adapt. Yeah. Uh, this thing, uh, I know, 
I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, we're all waiting for the, well, the vaccines already started here in, yeah. in Canada. And, uh, and I think a lot of people are banking on just that. I don't think it's going to be that quick of a turnaround. Uh, for things to get any better. I mean, we're already lit hearing uh, things in the UK where the virus is mutating and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But we don't know where this is going to go. But one yeah. thing I think is going to happen is this is going to stay on for a while. Yeah. And we need to adapt and, and but still keep living our lives. Yeah. I think uh, the biggest problem is when people aren't respecting other people, right? And I think that's where the problems Huge. come up. You know, let's all yeah. respect each other. And yeah. that's the bottom line. I yeah. mean, And but, we're shaming others. Like, you know, yeah. Where's your mask? Who are you hanging out with? Why are you having this? Why are you doing that? And I think like, everybody sh you know, knows Get it. off social media <laughs> for the wrong reasons. Yes. You know, use social media for the good and, yeah. you know, watch stuff and see stuff and put the hearts in comments and just don't be bashing everybody. Yeah. Well, that's a whole different podcast right it there. It is, absolutely. All right, going back to, to Portugal. So after Madeira, you also went to the continent? To, yeah, to, so I went um, to, uh, to, to Lisbon. Lisbon. I went to Porto two times. Oh, nice. And I uh, went to the Algarve for the first time. So I literally did... You know, center, north, south, uh, and both and islands, Azores and, and Madeira. Man, so you just went all just, over. You know, what, just do it. And then you Nike, had the Nike. you <laughs> had the chance of being in uh, in one of the main uh, TV stations. Yeah, so my in friend Portugal. of mine and my one of my really good friends uh, is from San Miguel, and he lives in, in Lisbon, and he's uh, on a Portuguese TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a national program and international because it's seen here as well and all over Portuguese uh, diaspora. Yeah, and um, he. Uh, randomly said hey you're here in Lisbon uh, you're going to meet this show and I'm like what me why like why am I interested he goes no you've like you've set yourself for this career that you've been doing for over, you know 10 years now and yeah. you know you have a story to tell and uh, you're going I'm like okay I gotta go buy a shirt I gotta go look nice I gotta you know, I gotta look sharp I, I gotta get some nice shoes and whatever and no uh, sandals no yeah, no <laughs> and uh, and yeah so I went and it was an awesome experience and I was like oh my god like how's my Portuguese like how am I gonna go on this national Portuguese show you know speaking Portuguese here is one thing but in there it's you know you can't yeah but you know what this is the thing when it comes down to speaking another language it's um, one of the things I always say is don't be afraid to speak it even if you don't speak it well, yeah. because that only shows that you know another language. So you, you're starting off the bat knowing two languages. Yeah. So don't be embarrassed, yeah. right? And I'm saying this because I used to think the same way. Yeah. Now I'm wiser and older and <laughs> a lot older. And I don't care anymore. Uh, but I used to care. I used to think, you know, but with me was the reverse. Because even though I was born here, I was raised in Portugal. And my English, English was second language to me. And it still is. Yeah. You know, it still is second language. I still feel a lot more comfortable speaking Portuguese than I do speaking English. So when I started doing the podcast, I'm like in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to be saying things properly? Is it the right pronunciation? Is, is it going to work out? Is it not? But then you just put all yeah. that aside and just just go ahead and do and it. And it's with anything, right? Even like performance, you know. Oh my God, what if I make a mistake? What people don't notice it, really? Yeah, you know, of course. It, it's they're too either they're looking at you know whatever's in the background or they're looking at the host what she's wearing. They're not looking at you. They don't you know they'll they'll look at you and then they won't even notice you know that you made a mistake. So I want to get to unless know, you're my parents. <laughs> like, what did you say? What did you want? I want to get to know um, how that whole experience really was going into the backstage, talking to all these people, uh, going through and seeing that reality of how a tv station works abroad i mean which is more or less the same way as tv stations work here i want to know about all of those experiences but that's going to be right after when we, we come back yeah, he right knows he knows break. this though he knows i just told him <laughs> split second boom he knew right away okay commercial stay we'll with back. us today's podcast is brought to you by workplace one a company offering boutique private offices co-working spaces and virtual office solutions as well as meeting rooms in the best neighborhoods of toronto and kitchener waterloo ideal for entrepreneurs companies and passionate business people workplace one is where you want to be with your business for more information go over to workplaceone.com Oh, I thought you were actually actually like. No, we're not breaking for anything. Oh, I thought I had time to you know go get Come you know. Come on, Matthew, we're back. Another coffee, Matthew, but okay, we're back. <laughs> you want a coffee? We can go get a coffee. No, we can good. stop it's it again good. and go get a coffee and do the editing, and nobody will find out. That's right, the magic of television. Exactly. That's what we we're talking about. But we're gonna continue. Um, I said I wanted to know everything about what you saw at this TV station and how you felt going in the back. Uh, you know, walking around and, and seeing how they do things. Like, what was the biggest, um, 
Was there anything that you, you saw that you're like, oh, I didn't know they did it this way? Cause yeah, I didn't know how much the, the real the set was. Mm. Because here, I mean, I've been in on, on you know, movie sets a couple of times and I've been on uh, you know, TV sets and things are kind of fake, right? You, you yeah. look, it looks like there's a plate of food there, but no, it's actually you know, plastic with you know, some shiny stuff on it to yeah, make yeah. it look real. But there, it's like the oven works, the microwave, like all these things that work. You yeah. know, the toilet flushes, the lights, the TVs. I'm like, what? This is cool. <laughs> they got it all hooked up. It's a good thing that the toilet flushes. I think that's well, a good the fake, <laughs> I mean, the fake washroom, right? You would think it's just kind of a poster or a green screen or something. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's actually real. Really? So I was like a kid in a candy store when I was at the Seek and Missunal Studios. Yeah. Um, and I was seeing all the lights and all the crews and the crane cameras and, and how much it takes a village to put on a TV show. Really? Like there's like 40 people in the background. If, if not more, if I'm exaggerating, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the, what you just said, the magic of TV. Like a lot of times we, we look at a TV show and we realize that there's, there's has to be a camera guy there. Yeah. But then sometimes that's all people think about. Oh, there's somebody holding a camera. Yeah. That's about it. Well, I mean, I'm coming from a small, you know, community run program where it's, yeah. a, you know, husband and wife and then you know, I help out and there's a few other people helping out, but yeah. that's it. Right. That's and, it. and you can do it. And we've, they've done it. And amazing. with the magic of TV, that's, yeah. that's what you get. Yeah. And there's people that do it by themselves. You know, exactly. AKA, we're, we're doing our <laughs> own thing by ourselves. Shooting, no, no, filming. There's, and, you know, uh, there's John, how many? Mary and, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> John Murray Joseph, isn't it? Yeah, no. I was going to go yeah. there, but... Uh, it's okay. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's the season. But uh, yeah, it's like, wow, how many people, um, yeah. you know, that... And there's like one guy to put on a microphone, and that's his job. All he does is he comes in, and he puts... I'm like, really? And he's paid to just clip microphones hey, on listen, people? listen, he can really pin that microphone. I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, you know, there's one girl who's paid just to grab you at the entrance and, you know, be your handler, and you don't... Do you want a water? Do you want this? Do you want... It's like, okay. It's you get your own kind of green room, and, you know... Your makeup slot, you're timed in for makeup and you got to be there. And they, it's like, whoa, yeah, this is cool. So did that make you feel like, yes. Like this I was is, a big TV star? Yes. This is what I want to <laughs> do with my life? Is that it? Yes. Can I see myself in one of those shows? Yeah, but yes. Uh, can I see myself in full Portuguese in, a por in Portugal? Probably not. I mean, I mm -hmm. need to call Anna and get some more Portuguese lessons for that. <laughs> but, um, but eventually, yeah. But why don't you just do it here? I mean, that's the plan, right? Yes. Yeah. Can I do it here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, um, what do you see? Where do you see yourself now? Now that we're talking about this, where do you see yourself in 10, 15 years from now? Let's not I, even go. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't set long-term goals. <laughs> okay. Not a goal, but what would you like to do? Like right now, as you, as you are right now, like, what would you like to do? I'd, I'd, I love talking to people. I'd love to have my own show. I love yeah. talking. I, I love hosting. I, you know, light goes on in a camera and it's a whole other Matthew that shines through. Yeah. And connecting with an audience. All right. So we're going to have to get you uh, a little bit more confident in pressing that button because you've got all the equipment, man. You know how to work with all this stuff. You've been in front of a camera for years. Just start, man. Just start doing it because, listen, this is how, how Creative Spin started. Uh, it was out of like the same situation. I, I, I've, I've been telling my clients, do this, do this. And then we started working with them and doing it. And I'm like, you know, sick and tired of explaining the same thing over and over. And I'm like, I like this. This isn't bad. Like, I enjoy being able to have that conversation with someone. And I have the equipment. Why don't I just turn, why don't I get from, you know, behind the cameras and get in front of the camera and start yeah. doing it? And that's how this this whole thing all happened. And, you know, we're, I think, what, what is it, 70 episodes or something like that going on? Awesome. And uh, and I've had so much fun. I've, I've been able to talk to so many different people. And I'm a curious guy. You know, I'm, I'm not that kind of person that thinks he knows it all and all of that. But, and that's what makes me be curious. I yeah. want to learn. I want to learn from everybody. I don't care if they're younger or older or whatever they are. But 100%. I can relate yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know what? We're going to talk after this. All right. We're going to get you set up properly, man. Get 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 the brand going because that's the other thing, right? You got to get your... Uh, On episode 700, we'll come back and say, okay, where's Matthew now? Where is he now? <laughs> 700. I'm just trying to do the math quickly here. That'll be... Uh, okay. Then uh, no. I'll 200. be in the retirement home by then. <laughs> no walking. Not if you do it once a week. Yeah. I'll be walking in. Okay, Matthew, sit down. Let's go have yeah. this conversation we were supposed to have 20 years ago. Yeah. But I think, I mean, every. I think everything... Everything falls in place when it needs to fall in place. That, mm -hmm. that, that's kind of where I where I, I I see it. You know, if it's if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. We got to go chase our dreams. Absolutely, do yeah. what we love. 
Absolutely. Um, there's too many people out there that are miserable in their jobs or that think they can do it and they're just horrible on television or on radio or whatever it is, yeah. you know. And it's like, you know, find something else. Find your passion, find your niche, like and, you said. And nowadays, I think, with the, the way technology is in... It, it just made things so much easier for most people to be able to start doing this, yeah. right? Uh, when you look back, I mean, when I look back at 20 years ago when I started, and you had to have a TV station with the, the right cameras. Cameras were expensive yeah. back then. Equipment yeah. was, and I huge. mean, if you think like, equipment was expensive downsized now. downsized to this, really. Yeah, I think. Yeah. You know, you have a whole stamp studio and, yeah. and, and a phone, which yeah. is crazy. And then everybody now with the pandemic is learning how to do that stuff from home. Yeah. Where I already had my own green screen and my own ring lights and all that stuff exactly. already. And, and so yeah. that made it, made it a lot easier for people to be able to express their voice and to be able to put good quality material out there. Yeah. I mean, you see, I'm blown away with some of the channels that are on YouTube. Yeah. That I know that these guys are just using their little cameras, not little, but, you know, when you compare it to the TV station, yeah. right? And the quality is there. And some of them are actually putting out better quality than, than some of them. Yeah, than some of those big cameras. <laughs> some of yeah. the, the, the big guys. And you're like, okay, this can be done. Yeah. This can be done. Uh, I think this is opening up to be a very interesting world. It's, it's going to be noisy. It is noisy already. Noisy, yeah. when, when I say noisy, is, is you know, the amount of people out there doing stuff. But I think there's a space for everybody, yeah. honestly. You know, there's space for everybody. You got to be you. You got to be Matthew, yeah. you know. And, uh, and, and that's where the voice comes in. And, and that's where there, there's going to be someone, someone there that, that will listen to you and, and to what you have to say. Um, and this goes for anybody out there that's listening to us right now. I mean, if you're thinking about it, do it. You know, if you're not going to do it now, when, when are you going to do it? Yeah. You have access to equipment nowadays. The internet is, 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 is there. I mean, it's so, much, so easy to just, like you said, you have a phone. Everybody has a phone. Just turn it around and just yeah. record yourself and post it up. I mean, you don't even have to post it. Yeah. You can do it live. And do it horizontal. If you're doing television. Uh, well, it depends, <laughs> right? It depends where, where you, <laughs> where you, you know, want to go Instagram, with it. Instagram, Snapchat, yeah, you can do it, you know, yeah. with the vertical, but yeah. All right. And, and so I guess what I want to do is uh, finish off this conversation by you advising your, uh, yourself. Um, pretend you're talking to 19-year-old Matthew. And what would you tell Matthew now? Like, don't do this, do this, think about it this way, do it that stop, way. Stop caring about what people think. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's one of my insecurities. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starting out, it's like, oh, my God, you know. Was I positioned right? You know, did I speak too long? What was I saying? What was I wearing? You know, all that kind of stuff. But now it's like, just be you. Just do it. Okay. Like you said. You guys heard it here first. Be yourselves. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much for finally swinging by. I know. It might not be the, the last time the we have you guy, here. The busiest guy, but we're gonna, you know, now I'm, I'm here. So. We're going to get you coming back once <laughs> hey, you have... Hey, do you want to co-host? Hey, hey, listen. That's how I started in television. Hey, this, I can start this, out on podcasting this might now. Be, this might be it, <laughs> guys. This might be it. The new co-host of that's the it. Creative Spin Podcast. Jamie and Matthew. Uh, I don't know how Anna's going to feel about this. Oh, that's right. Oops. Sorry, Anna. Uh, we're going to... We're not... Oh, I'm going to edit this. No, I'm not. I don't edit <laughs> stuff out, Matthew. Uh-oh. Oh, we're going to be in trouble. Uh-oh. I don't edit Here I am thinking out. you're just going to use the good points and the good parts. Uh, and expect a call from Anna. That's all okay. I'm going to say. Uh-oh. She's going to go, what the heck's going on, Matthew? <laughs> you know, she's a hey, teacher, you so... Three hosts. Why not? You're going <laughs> to... Why not? Co-hosts, you can have as many as you want. There you go. That's what we're going to do. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. Jamie, thanks so much for having me. Have a great new year. You too. Thank you. Thank you.